um, people uh, for the rest of the world think that New Zealand and Australia has a similar accent, but to us, <laughs> we, we can make jokes about each other and the accents. Um, anyway, um, so uh, we've got to Level Star. Level Star is the like the prefix that all the the level the level up plugins are published under. So everything that's the level dash as a level plugin. So level star is like the name for the ecosystem. Uh, so a bit of philosophy. So you may have heard of the Unix philosophy. Who's heard of the Unix philosophy? Yeah. Good. So the Unix philosophy is about building many small tools that fit well together, that you can link them together <coughs> with um, pipes, with strings. Um, the communicate the text and so on, but a whole bunch of simple small tools and each thing does one thing does it well. And there's this other thing called the Enax philosophy, which is to build um, build a, a small, really performant core of your application in C, and then uh, build all the high level stuff in uh, with flexible um, dynamic language. Uh, in Emacs, this is um, done in list. But in Node.js, it's JavaScript. And Node.js has both of these things um, because it has a great um, package system um, from NPM. So you can have a whole bunch of tiny modules that do one thing well. And you have um, the Emacs philosophy because the, the core of it, the, the, where the performance really, really matters, is in uh, C, uh, and very good C, and everything else is in JavaScript. And even the, uh, the implementation of that dynamic language is uh, also implemented very well, highly optimized in C. Um, so Node.js is the best of both worlds. Now, level up is like is the same idea um, as Node.js. Um, this isn't literal, but um, basically the same idea. <coughs> so. Uh, let's compare what you can do with LibreDB uh, to SQL. So select, get a bunch of data. Uh, so in LibreDB, you do a string. Uh, so you create a string, and you can pass an option to put like the start and end point. But that's how you just basically just give me lots of data. Um, so what if you wanted to get data that's changing in real time? Uh, this feature doesn't exist in SQL. You have to pull the database. Uh, maybe it would look like this if it did. Uh, and level up, it looks like this. You use this live stream module, and um, you ask for a live stream, and um, that will pull out all the data that exists in that range, and then it will keep the stream open, and when more data uh, is inserted into the database, it will give you that show. So it's perfect for sort of live feeds and that sort of stuff. And this is what really, uh, this is inherently Simple to do um, because um, level up is embedded into your node process. So you can control everything that goes into it and comes out of it. And so you can just intercept um, whenever something is, is, has gone in successfully and you can just add it to any uh, streams um, that are currently um, registered with it. And like this is, this is a feature that hardly any other database has. Uh, CouchDB has a changes feed. Um, does anyone use the change of speed and couch? Yeah, change of speed and couch is really good, but I always wanted to have uh, how to do a view in couch and do and like tail the view and stuff like that. And you just can't you can't do that uh, in general. But in little view, you can do that with nearly all the modules. So, um, what if you wanted to get an aggregation of data and couch to, and, and this SQL would look like this? Um, little view, we can have macros. So this is a MapReduce module. Um, we pass it to the database. We get the MapReduce uh, thing. I'll explain that more shortly. We map it. Um, the data is not parsed for us. It's always uh, well. I, I just always use text, uh, well, binary rather, um, and then uh, parse it, uh, emit it. This is this is basically the same as Couch um, or um, or Mongo. Uh, add it up, because these are strings, so you need to turn them back into numbers. Uh, when you save it, it's saved, it's turned back into a string by default, so you're okay there. And then you can query it, and um, you can also tailor 
which will keep the stream open and you'll get live changes. <coughs> and this is, um, I didn't try to put this in my slides, but, but you, can, uh, you can group it into various levels. So you could have do an aggregation group into say like um, city, region, country, and then you can select, request the data from the aggregation from like at a city level, at a um, region level or a country level. Or in, in, for the empty brackets, um, means the like the global level, basically. Um, so, also sometimes you need to petition data. You have like, um, you know, products aren't customers. You need a way to, to um, handle one thing at a time. So, in SQL, uh, you do something like this, and then you have a whole bunch of uh, scheme options. Um, in LibreDB, you do this. Uh, so you use some level, sub-level, um, and you, you add it to level DB, you let it add to the DB instance, and then you can create um, a sub-database. Here we have a sub-database called Foo, um, and that returns you a new database instance that has exactly the same API as a standard level up um, instance and works exactly the same, except that it stores, when you can put something into there, it stores it in the big database with a prefix, but it hides, the, it abstracts away the prefix. So when you can put something into FooDB, it, it uh, has Foo attached to start, and when you, when you, do a, um, a, a, when you do a read stream or something from Foo, it will give it to you all of the things that have Foo at the start. Um, but it will handle all of that uh, for you, apparently. Interesting thing, so, is that you can create um, nested regions, uh, nest, nested um, sublevels. So you can put a sublevel inside a sublevel because it acts just like the whole um, database. Um, so, what if you wanted to, sometimes you need to, to execute some code, especially when you're doing uh, interesting stuff, you need to execute some code um, on an insert. So, this is my favorite, this is one of my favorite SQL features. You can change what the end of line separator is. In fact, you have to. So here we have two nested expressions, and normally um, SQL ends on a semicolon, but it can't understand that you've nested two. If you use two semicolons here, it would give a syntax error. So you have to tell it to change the delimiter. And then you do a create trigger, and the inside one somehow knows that that is a that end. I'm not sure if you can nest changing the limiters. Uh, that would be cool. Um, and then you end the old one with um, the first limiter, the limiter that changed to, and then you change the limiter back. I know. If you want to put up with shit like that, you can <laughs> use this cure. <laughs> so um, yeah. So here's, here's how you do that in, uh, in LibreDB. So you, you have, uh, if you're using if you're using LibreDB some level, otherwise you can use this module called hooks to do this. Um, so you have a, a prehook, and a prehook runs um, before the um, the batch or the delete or the put as applied to the database. So it will call it will call um, it will call your function with um, the change which is uh, an object just like this, uh, which is the same format as the arguments to the batch operation. And then you can call this add function to add um, additional operations to the batch. And if you path, and I think if you call add false, then it will, it will remove the operation that it triggered on. And this is really useful for doing all kinds of stuff. Now this, this sort of, this sort of um, trigger is just for when um, you can you want to do a change without doing any AI when you want to do a synchronous change. Now, if you want to do um, a oh yes, uh, this little feature. So, if you can with the different sublevels in one database, you can do a prehook, and then you can insert. You can add. You can have a batch that spans those <coughs> different um, subsections of the database. This is extremely useful for making an interesting. Um, we'll use that shortly. Um, so 
here is, say if you needed to trigger asynchronous code that say goes across to the network or something like that, um, so this is how you do it in SQL. Um, this, is, this time we'll use uh, at, at as the um, delimiter. So here we run an external, program, uh, external process that's just going to append uh, a timestamp um, into a file and it's going to run after um, we insert something to put. Um, uh, difficult to get any real time data out of um, SQL. Um, but we also have this uh, thing in level called trigger. So we apply it to um, a database, we give it the name, it needs to not collide with other trigger we might be using. Um, and then we have this callback where we can um, we can do some action that can involve arbitrary behavior. So like we can read from the database, we can write to the database, we can um, request something from the network, we can do whatever, we can do anything we like, we just have to call done when we're finished. And if the database, if the process crashes while we're in the middle of this, when it comes back up, um, it will rerun the process. So you know that even if your thing crashes occasionally, eventually <coughs> your, your, all your jobs will be consistent and will eventually run. The, um, that does bring one requirement that your job, it may run twice. Um, so, um, like it could complete but the database could crash, or the process could crash before you pull done successfully. So it needs to do have no effect if it runs twice. It needs to do the same thing. So uh, what about joins and stuff? People always do joins in, in SQL, and that's perhaps the one thing that they are uh, really good for. Um, and I think it needs to, some people are so pressure, they call, SQL databases get called relational databases uh, quite often. And I think that's really, um, that's really unfair for the rest of the databases because um, S SQL databases shouldn't own relational. Um, relational, the idea of, relation, of relations is actually like a mathematical idea from, from set theory. And uh, SQL is just a particular crude implementation of um, being able to deal with <coughs> relations of data. Um, great relations appear everywhere. Um, um, so for example, Twitter is basically um, a, a, is basically relational data. Um, you have tweets and then your view of when you look at your feed is a join basically of um, all the tweets um, joined to um, the people by, on the people that you're following, join uh, the shows all their tweets and sorts it by time. So this this would be the query if, it, if, if Twitter was implemented like this. It's not implemented directly like this because it wouldn't um, it wouldn't scale and it wouldn't um, it wouldn't be real time. It wouldn't give me the latest updates and stuff like that. So <coughs> if you were going to do a relational join like this, and then would you be held to do it? Uh, so just a bit of um, so just first the first thing is we've got to structure our data. In, into ranges. So this is actually one of the best features about LibreDB is the way that the things are stored on disk in the, in the um, sorted string tables, they're sorted in order. So if you set your data, if you save your data, so your data is saved in order, then it means that you can read a whole bunch of records in a single disk set. So it's really fast. Um, we're in other databases you, there's no guarantee that your records are stored adjacent. So you may have to sort, to read a range, you may have to move the, the head all over the place. But with LibreDB, um, reading a bunch of, um, like reading a range of data is just as far, is, isn't any slower really than, in terms of disk things, than um, reading, um, than reading a single document. So it's best, um, so it's, it's really, really good to arrange your data so that you have it stored as a range of, of records rather than, a, um, rather than a single chunk because then you can just into that and it will eventually end up in certain the same place and you can read it up. So, um, so we have like this tweets table 